All right, so in this video, I want to show you a different way to model. Um, eventually, you can combine these two methods. Uh, this one, I think, is going to be really useful for our assignment. It's uh, sculpting. It's a really intuitive way to work. Um, and this is kind of the most basic version of it. So if you are really into this, you can dig deeper on your own. Um, so uh, we have our cube again. And there's our modeling tab. We could build a basic shape here to start with. Uh, oops, let's actually have face select on. And then I'll, I don't know, pull out a few more faces just so we have something to work with. It's kind of slightly Tetris shaped object. Um, and it's a good idea to get roughly the shape that you want before you start sculpting. Um, and maybe I will subdivide this a little bit as well. So I'll go F3, find my sub subdivide. It's right there. I use the arrow keys to jump down in this menu, but you also could use your uh, mouse. And then here I'll increase it a little bit. Maybe I'll make it a little smooth. Um, yeah, we'll call that good. And then I'll also go uh, F3, smooth shape. Uh, Shade smooth, there it is. Now I'll just click into the sculpting tab. You can see now it's rendering my model as this kind of red clay. That's It only does that uh, to kind of help you understand the form better. This isn't necessarily what it will look like. This isn't the texture that it's generated for it or anything. This red is just um, to help you kind of understand the shape. So. This sculpting uh, tool is pretty awesome. On the left here, I have a bunch of different kinds of sculpting tools that I can use. Um, and then on the right is where all my settings for my current tool is. So this one that's selected by default is really useful. It's called Sculpt Draw. And I, you can see I can just click on my mesh and it'll start to kind of push vertices around. You'll notice that at this point, it's not adding any extra geometry at all. It's just moving the, the vertices that we already have, which can be pretty useful if you have a model that's a little blocky, but basically the right shape, and you want to, say, uh, inflate part of it with this inflate tool here. I could increase the radius and strength like that. Uh, or I could smooth parts of the mesh down using this one, smooth. Oh, that's very strong. I can decrease the strength. And while I'm working, I can press the S key to change, I think this is the rate, yeah, change the radius with F. Oops. So now that will affect the entire object. And then I think it's Shift F, changes the strength, that's right. So one is as strong as can be, and then point one is like not very much. <clears throat> so right off the bat, that gives us a few options for shaping things in a more subtle way. Pretty cool. Um, but you maybe want to add a lot more detail in sculpt, uh, by sculpting. Uh, so by default, like I said, this is just uh, moving the existing vertices around. It has, hasn't added any new geometry, which I think if I do this, you can kind of see it's pretty much the same shape we had before. Um, it, it converted everything to triangles, I guess, but besides that. Um, yeah. So, whoa. Okay, and these are all different ways of rendering the scene up here, these different circles, but for now, this one is fine. Um, but so to make it add new geometry by default, um, with any of these brushes selected, I go to this option here underneath, which is called Dyne Topo. That stands for Dyna Dynamic Topology. So if I open this up, and I'll check that box, it turns it on. This is okay. So now, now it's drawing all these edges. And uh, as I sculpt on it, you can see it's adding a bunch more geometry here. And it's adding it in kind of an uncontrolled, crazy way. Uh, it's all these triangles everywhere. There's no order to this. Um, it's just kind of based on where I click. And also, it's based on how close to the model I'm, I'm working from. Um, 
But again, you can see right away I'm able to build pretty cool shapes. There's a lot of other brushes here that you can explore. I like this sculpt draw one just fine. Um, in addition to radius and strength, it also has uh, uh, add or subtract. So add adds material on like this. You can think of it as material. It's not really. It's still just a 3D mesh. Um, or I could subtract, and that kind of carves out material. And you want to be careful. Uh, we want our 3D mesh to be a solid uh, shape without any hidden interior geometry or anything intersecting with itself, really. Um, so just watch out for that as you're working. Uh, cavities, concavities are fine like this, but uh, let's see. This snake hook tool is a really powerful way to add. Whoa. Oh, I guess I have uh, mirroring turned on. So symmetry, here we go. So in sculpt mode, symmetry is on by default under here. I can just turn that off since this is no longer symmetrical at all. So the snake hook tool I can use to pull out kind of um, these strands of geometry, which could be useful for making things like horns or tentacles or fingers or whatever. Um, but it's a little unpredictable, which is why I recommend you get pretty much um, the shape that you want it to be when you start, um, before you start sculpting. But with this tool, it's, it's much easier for me to really screw this mesh up and have lots of things uh, intersecting and going every which way. And this generally isn't what we want, uh, at least not normally. Maybe for a more experimental project, you might want to try something like this. Looks kind of cool. Um, yeah, so there's the snake hook. There's smooth as a tool that's really useful. If something's looking a little bumpy, a little ragged, and we want it to be very smooth, uh, in this case, I guess, kind of organic alien form, and smooth everything down with the smooth tool. The blob tool lets me add blobs pretty straightforward. Uh, is that the blob? Yeah. Inflate lets me inflate things oh, just by clicking on it. And I can pull in here and it'll add more detail. You can see it's. Uh, the level of sort of resolution of my mesh depends on how zoomed in, zoomed in I am. But I also can change it here with this detail size so I can make it much smaller. If I want more, more geometry there. Most of these brushes have a plus and minus option. So minus for inflate is deflate. Um, and you got to just kind of experiment with these tools and um, kind of learn how they work. Uh, by playing with them a little bit. There's flatten, which sort of tries to average where you're clicking into a, a flat surface, which works pretty well. There's things like fill, where if you have a hole, it'll try to fill holes up. You can see it's kind of making this depression shallower and shallower. Well, there's nothing left. There's scrape, which I don't really use very much. Is it sort of kind of carves depressions and things. Uh, pinch, pinches the model together. You can see everything's kind of bunching up, which we want to be careful about. Grab lets you just grab and move portions of it. So if you want to sort of adjust one of these things you pulled out with the snake hook, this can be useful. There's our snake hook again. Uh, what's this? Thumb lets you kind of smear things around just a little bit. Uh, and there's a bunch of other ones, nudge, rotate, simplify. Ooh, that's new. That's probably pretty handy. Okay. So anyway, that'll get you started sculpting. Normally, uh, if you were working this way, you would have another step where you basically make another model with a cleaner mesh that's not all these kind of crazy polygons using this as a base. Um, but for our purposes for this assignment, this is fine. And that's sculpting for you.